Thank you, Peter. Uh, and um, good afternoon to you all. Um, it's a, it's a big honor and big challenge uh, to be to be with you uh, today and for the next uh, day. Uh, I'm I'm very uh, thrilled about that, uh, as it's my first address to such an audience since I've taken my since I took my duties uh, on 1st of February. Um, so. Thanks a lot for being here. Impressive audience, and uh, I hope uh, that we'll have very fruitful uh, exchanges on on the work we do at the OECD on tax matters, which we hope is is useful um, to all our stakeholders. And there are many stakeholders that we work with: the, the governments to start with, our 34 member countries, but also beyond our member countries, uh, the non-OECD member countries, which I think are getting more and more critical to the relevance of the work we do, and I'll get back to that, and I think tomorrow we'll have a session on, on this. But also, beyond the governments, uh, what really matters are the, the people who do the stuff. I mean, the government, they regulate, they try to avoid too big problems, but uh, I mean, they try. They try hard, but I'm not sure they always success there. Uh, but what matters is the people who, who do the work, who do the investments, who do the growth, do the employment, and uh, and these people are you uh, who are there. And that's why it's so critical for us to engage with you and to make sure that what we do is useful, not harmful. First, do no harm, uh, like in, in medicine. But uh, uh, we 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 hope that uh, the work we do at the OECD is mutually beneficial to governments and, and investors as you are. And that's why. This conference uh, is so important uh, for uh, the OECD as a whole and for the Center for Tax Policy and Administration in particular. Uh, as, as you know, the OECD is uh, the key player in terms of promoting investments, promoting uh, cross-border trade and cross-border investments. And I think tax can play a key role there, um, positive or negative. It can be a big hurdle. It can prevent from good investments to take place, but it can also facilitate them and facilitate better understanding mm -hmm. among OECD member countries and in this globalized economy with non-OECD member countries. So as this is the first time I, I had the opportunity to address you, even though I recognize a number of friendly faces in, in the room. I'm not completely new in, in, in that uh, environment. Uh, and, and we all are the usual uh, suspects in, in, in the tax world. But uh, uh, that said, it's, it's the first time I have the opportunity to, uh, um, to uh, present uh, on, on CTPA. I would like to share with you my priorities as, as new director, which is a challenge. Of course, I, I need to pay tribute to, to Jeffrey, who could not be replaced, but, but still, I'm here and I'm happy to bring the views I would like uh, uh, to uh, promote in the uh, next years. When I say next years, I don't put the time limit, but I can commit here that it will not last 30 years. Uh, <laughs> so what are the main priorities for the um, upcoming years? Um, the first of the three main priorities, you know, when you prioritize, uh, of course, you can be tempted to take all the actions of the Center for Tax Policy and Administration and say, these are my priorities, and then you end up with a list of 25, and you have no priorities. So I have three main priorities that I would like to push for the next couple of years, or let's say five years. The first one is to engage with non-OECD countries. How do we square the circle of having standards, which are good standards, which are standards to the standard, I would say, I mean, something which is good for the countries like the OECD countries, but also which can outreach and uh, uh, make sure that we end up with one standard and not double standard, because I think that from your perspective, at least that's what I hear, as well as from the OECD government's perspective, the worst case scenario is to end up with double standard, triple standard, or or all the countries doing what they feel like doing without coordinating, without following some guidelines. And the challenge there, square, what I call squaring the circle, is to make sure that we keep the standard, but that we are flexible to, 
that we keep what we think is core to the standard while bringing the non-OECD countries to endorse this approach and to make sure that we have a common understanding of what is needed, what is wishable, and what at the end of the day the countries will implement so that you don't face several uh, different uh, approaches to key international tax matters. Engaging with non-OECD countries means actually different things. The first of them is in the globalized economy, in the new environment, we don't have only the G8, G7 that we like. I mean, in the old world, we had the G7 with the OECD being the informal secretary of the G7 because the seven countries were all members of the OECD. But since 2009, we have a new environment with the G20 next meeting next week, uh, or 10 days time in Los Cabos, uh, Mexico. And there, uh, we have some big non-OECD countries. I think eight of the G20 are non-OECD countries. How do we engage with them? How do we make sure that they are comfortable with the work we do? And that's a big challenge, especially as some of them are not necessarily keen on, on being committed or on being bound by OECD standards. And you know the story about the OECD references in the communiques, in particular in the first uh, attempt to do a communique back in uh, 2009, 2nd of April in London, at the London summit. Some countries say, well, we strike out the OECD because we're not a member. After three years of efforts, hard work, uh, in particular from our Secretary General, uh, who's been feared less in, in promoting the OECD there, now I think the OECD is part of the landscape. We are part of the G20 process. I will be in Los Cabos in, in, in a couple, I mean, in, in ten, 10 days' time to try to push for uh, what, what we think is, is good, including in tax matters. So what we do is engage with China. Before being appointed uh, or taking on my duties on the 1st of February, uh, I paid visits to China, to India, to South Africa, to Brazil, and I was blamed to the US, of course. Uh, but I was blamed by a number of other OECD countries saying, well, why don't you visit us, by the way? It's good to go to China, but uh, uh, good to visit us as well. But I wanted to send a strong message that I don't believe in, in oppositions. I don't believe in uh, fights. I, I, I strongly believe in mutual understanding, which includes points where we disagree. And it's much better, I think, to identify where we disagree and then see whether we can reach an agreement or not, rather than trying to fetch it, which can be the temptation of international organization working by consensus. You can always fetch something. But at some point, if you fetch it a few years later, well, you have a court case, or you have litigation, or you have discomfort, or you have uncertainty, which I think is probably the worst thing that a company, an international company, can, can face. So engaging with the OECD countries, the big emerging economies, and I think we're making significant progress there. China is an observer thinking of becoming a full participant to the OECD. Brazil, which were, I mean, off the radar screen now is attending some of the meetings and guess what? They've decided to engage on transfer pricing because they've told us that they think they can learn things and that they can engage with us and, and work with us to improve their own practice or legislation, which I think is, is a positive signal. We engage with India with the success that you know, which is not always that convincing, but it's very important to engage with them and, and, and to talk to them. And South Africa uh, is, is very close to what we're doing. I have also to mention Argentina, even though they are, they are going through some turmoil uh, that I don't always uh, fully understand, but maybe you do. Uh, anyway, uh, big emerging economies, that's one. Second is the next generation of emerging economy. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to see the Commissioner of Colombia uh, here in, in the room. Uh, I think that's, that's a good model, that's a good example of where we can head to as an organization in terms of engaging with the next generation of the emerging economies. 
which do not have the same interests as the big emerging economies. Brazil can say, that's the price to pay if you want to invest in my country. I'm not sure it's the case of many other developing or emerging economies. China, yes. India, yes. Brazil, yes. The others, not sure. So the perspective is not the same. We need to engage. And we have many requests. Uh, Colombia has expressed its willingness to join the OECD, but we, we have received many other requests, not as formal as the Colombian one. But that's what we want to do. And to do that, we've put in place new instruments, such as Global Forum. And we have the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information, which is a special body, uh, because it's uh, legally speaking a separate entity. It's under the umbrella of the OECD, but it has its own rules of functioning. But we are putting in place other global fora. Global Forum on Transfer Pricing. We have Global Forum on Tax Treaties. And we'll establish soon a global forum on, on, on VAT, VAT. So that's a way to engage and to make sure that these countries are part of the agenda that we develop. Developing countries, because you know, with non-OECD countries, within OECD countries, you have big differences between Chile and the US, between South Korea and European countries. But outside of the OECD, you don't have one block. You have the big emerging economies the next generation of emerging economies, developing economies, you have the least developed economies, and, and, and they don't have all the same interests. So we need to engage with developing economies, and I will not talk long about that, as tomorrow we'll, we'll spend a session on, on this. But we engage then. Finally, on our relationship with non-OECD, uh, I thought, and I still think, that we had to improve, as the OECD, we had to improve our relationship with the UN. For years, there has been something like an opposition or, or, or a hard relationship, and I'm not sure it's helpful. So we've invited the UN to become an observer to the OECD, and my intention is that we do partner there. And I think the UN can play a very useful role in bringing the views of developing economies instead of uh, us both trying to develop double standards, which I think is not really feasible. It's more of a fantasy than, than a reality. And instead of living with fantasies, uh, let's, let's be real. And let's make sure that our standards can be as global as possible with the input of, of the UN and common work there. First priority, key challenge. But um, I hope we can make significant progress soon. The second priority I wanted to highlight is related to transfer pricing. I mean, we'll spend two sessions in the afternoon on transfer pricing, uh, and, and Joe uh, Andrews, uh, who's here, will share with you some very recent news. I mean, last week, uh, Working Party 6 was meeting and agreed on some drafts which will be published for public consultation uh, in a couple of days. So some have already complained to me, why not today? Because we want you to listen to what Joe will be telling you instead of going frantically through the pages of the new available documents. So you will have to be patient, and you will be briefed first, which will facilitate your reading of these documents. But making progress on transfer pricing, I think, is key. And there, I think we all need Keep in mind the context that, that Peter reminded us of. Uh, it's, it's probably the worst financial economic crisis for a long time. All governments are looking after money. And that has facilitated the perception that something's wrong in international tax matters. And I think we need to be very careful when politicians have some perceptions. Because there it's getting really scary and dangerous. And I think we've reached that point. On TV programs, you have, in Europe at least, you have uh, um, people saying, well, terms of pricing is about mispricing, and all these big multinationals, they are just stealing the money for poor developing countries. That's the perception. It's wrong. But that's the perception. And the perception is neither wrong or right, it's there. So what we need to do, and I think that's the responsibility of the OECD, is to make the proper analysis. And from that analysis, to try to draw some conclusions and make some, some proposals with you, with you all, I mean, all the stakeholders. 
And of course, this is, I mean, this is not uh, an ideal world or, or Disneyland, as we say in French, you know, when it's a world which is perfect and everybody loves each other, we call it Disneyland. It's not the case. Yeah, maybe you don't do it there, and there are some cultural gaps, you know. <laughs> but precisely, that's what we need to address, this perception. What's wrong there? Where does it come from? That perception that some multinationals have an effective tax rate which is incredibly low. You can have a simple answer, say, oh, it's about mispricing, let's move to an apportionment method that will fix the problem. I think it's wrong. I think that's the wrong answer. Or you can say, well, it's all about uh, aggressive tax planning, which, which has reached points where it's no more acceptable. I think it's wrong too. But there may be some parts which are right, and, and I think you're aware of that. So let's work together on, on these. And I think the intangible project is a good project there, because it's quite Sim, uh, quite a symbol of, of this perception. And what I would like to achieve quickly, I, I should have told you that um, I'm quite impatient. So I don't like projects when they last 10 years. I mean, the business restructuring project, uh, I chaired when I was uh, in the French civil service, I was the chair of Working Party 1, and I had to chair some joint meeting, Working Party 1, Working Party 6, but it lasted much too long. So what we would like to do is is to make progress quickly. And I think Joe is, is in the same line. Let's, let's move quickly. Let's deliver quickly. We cannot afford spending 10 years on a, on, on, on a program. So what we would like to do quickly is to provide the governments uh, with uh, a good analysis of the situation on transfer pricing, on harmful tax practices, as, as we call them, and, and their Hopefully, uh, I understand that uh, the consensus has shifted from, oh, there are tax haven that's uh, really bad and that's the source of the problem, to actually countries can decide on the level of taxation. That's not the problem. The problem is somewhere else. And if we try to close down all zero tax jurisdictions, it's an endless work which will not come up with any solution, concrete solution. So I think here the consensus has shifted, which is quite interesting. But still, there are some concerns, we need to address them, and I think that uh, the work which is being done is likely, with your support, with your involvement, to provide the right answers to the right questions instead of the wrong answers, which you can see in, in, in many instances. And some, by the way, some non-OECD countries would be keen to push some of the other answers because it may support their own agenda. So there we need to be very frank. We need uh, to uh, deal uh, with the issue in an honest manner. And uh, I think that uh, there we'll save what is the most important, I mean, a multilateral approach, one standard, instead of seeing countries, OECD and non-OECD countries, taking on unilateral decisions, unilateral CFCs or unilateral whatever. But of course, if we work on this, what we call base erosion profit shifting issue, because governments are very sensitive and much more sensitive than they were 10 years ago, we also need to make sure that governments do their job. And so in spite of the presence in the room of some of the governance representatives, I must confess that they are not always doing their job properly, in particular in dispute resolutions. I mean, I've been very much involved in my previous life in pushing for arbitration in Europe, because there is a hard law there. You have a multilateral convention, which is not respected. I mean, European countries break the law. They don't respect the multilateral convention. They don't implement it properly. And I think that on dispute resolutions, we should come up with a package which would address the concerns. No. No double exemption, no double taxation. That's the least we can do. And here, I think we have some some progress to make. And I'm pretty sure that Marlies de Richter, uh, who was involved also in pushing for arbitration uh, in her previous life, uh, uh, will will help. Uh, you know, Marlies is the new head of tax treaty and transfer pricing, uh, following Mary Bennett. I think they are.
both in, in the room. And uh, I mean, I stole, I must, I should have apologized for that, but I, I stole Marley's from a US large company. She didn't spend too much time there. But uh, I mean, we take the best uh, wherever we can. So uh, apologies for, uh, for that. But we're happy to have Marley's pushing for, pushing for this. The third priority is about tax policy. That may be less of immediate interest to you all, uh, because it's more an economic approach than the, 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 the legal work we do on tax free and transfer pricing. But uh, there, I think CTPA, the Center for Tax Policy and Administration, it includes tax policy, uh, there the um, uh, contribution can be good in terms of producing statistics. Because without statistics, without the knowledge of the data, we cannot do much in terms of, when I say we, the governments cannot do much in terms of tax policy. And we aim at producing these, um, uh, these statistics. We've just done recently an extension of the revenue statistic to Latin America. And I think that's work which is of interest to you because it can give you a sense of what the tax systems will look like in the future. We are trying also to do some best practices or to better understand uh, what is good in, in, in tax incentives, what is not good. And there there is, I mean, support. And I think we're on the same line as, as, the, as the business, including the US business, in terms of, uh, of promoting uh, broad basis and, and low rates instead of having in developing countries or OECD countries many tax incentives that nobody understands anymore, which are not good at the end of the day for, uh, for good investments. So I think we can do work there. But under the tax policy priority, I would like to uh, do a special mention to the work on VAT, because uh, there, what I understand from the discussion with some of you guys is that uh, VAT is not an issue in this country, but is an issue for you because you bear some double taxation. I heard that I mean some amounts are just incredible. Hundreds of millions of dollars at risk because of double taxation, because you can tax some services at origin, but also at the destination. That means that you have double taxation. And there is no international guidelines to solve that. That's a bit crazy when you think of it, at least from a European or Asian perspective. I mean, there are 153 countries having VAT. We spend that much resource on VAT issues, why it's 30 to 40 percent of the revenue of many countries. And there, I think we should be a bit wiser and provide guidelines. And there, if we provide guidelines, not only for 34 member countries, but all the countries having VAT. And that's why we have pushed hard and finally obtained from the CFA, the Committee on Fiscal Affairs, that we will hold a global forum on VAT in November to talk about guidelines. And these guidelines will be developed within the OECD, but the end game will be for all countries to adopt them so that we can advise them when they put in place a, a VAT to eliminate the risk of double taxation or reduce it as much as we can. So these are the three main priorities which will keep us busy all in CTPA with grace uh, uh, in, the, in the coming year.